Welcome to Unit 3, Lesson 1. So you should look for the tasks to complete for U3L1. You can find that under Assignments on the Canvas Science 2 page or go to the home page and scroll down to that weekly calendar table. Look for today's date. Today is the uh, November the 11th. It is Veterans Day. We'll start off like we usually do with throwing you into breakout rooms for you to discuss a question. The first one relates to the homework. I just threw it into the chat. What is one thing you found interesting, weird, or surprising from the Bryson reading about the atmosphere? If there's nothing you want to share there, then you can share something about your resource. Just want you to chat a little bit about this and check in with each other. We'll come back together in about two minutes. Breakout rooms are open. What do they call it when you exceed the speed of the uh -huh. sound barrier? Yeah, he broke what's called the sound barrier. He went supersonic. And this is a human being that is not in a vehicle, right? Just by falling. That's how fast he went. Um, and so the video is really cool. We'll, we'll watch a more detailed video later of the actual descent. He kind of lost control for a second, right? He started to spin really, really fast and it got a little worried, but he got it under control and he slowed down a little bit as he, as he got closer to the earth. We'll talk about why that happens. Um, but here's the next question that I really want to pose to you quickly based off of what we learned in our previous unit. It's in the chat right now. When he reached 39,000 meters or 39 kilometers high, above sea level and stepped off the balloon. So everyone saw that, he kind of stood up, he got on the railing and then he literally kind of let go like he was jumping into a swimming pool. Why did he fall instead of floating like an astronaut? Chat about this with the person in your breakout room for two minutes and then we'll come back together. All righty. So who's got an idea? He was dressed like an astronaut. He was super high up off the surface of our planet. When he stepped off that little thing, why didn't he float? Why did he fall? Let's see, Ronan, we've been hearing from you. I wanna, and Sophia, we've been hearing from you. I'm glad you're, I wanna hear from somebody new. Bryce? Um, it's because number one, he has no lateral movement, so he isn't really traveling side to side or traveling in a direction. And he's also not really outside of the atmosphere completely yet. So he's still Very on good. his wind resistance. Yeah, so was he in space? Not quite, no. right? And in fact, you'll kind of realize uh, after um, further analysis uh, exactly where he was and kind of the map of the atmosphere. But very good, so Bryce said he has no lateral movement. Who remembers the fancy word that we use to describe that lateral movement? Again, I see Sophia and Ronan, that's great, but who else has an idea? What do we call that when? What does the moon have a lot of? What does the International Space Station have a lot of that allows it to stay in orbit? Who remembers that word? Should I pick a victim? Noah, how do you feel about it? Any ideas? Uh, is it tangential? Very good, tangential velocity, right? That's what he didn't have. Bob Gardner ascended in a balloon, so he was just going up vertically, right? He wasn't trying to travel sideways at any significant amount of speed. Um, and so gravity just grabbed him and pulled him right back down, which is what gravity does to everything. It's just that again, like Bryce said, he had no sideways velocity to try to maintain that fall to never hit the ground. So he just went straight on down. So the reason we're watching this while we're talking about the atmosphere is because to get to 39,000 meters or 39 kilometers up, he ascended up through at least two layers of our atmosphere. And in that little capsule that he was sitting in, they had a whole bunch of sensors and they took tons of data. They measured the outside temperature, they measured the outside air pressure, they did all kinds of stuff. And they posted a video of it on YouTube. And so what I'd like to do is have you kind of fast forward your way through this ascent video, collect data from it, and then graph it. It's gonna require you to follow instructions pretty closely and to use some fancier aspects of um, Google Sheets if you haven't used that before. So on my screen, uh, we have the tasks to complete list for today. We are now on step number three, the very last step, which is um, Bob Gardner's ascent. Uh, it says follow the instructions on this Bob Gardner atmospheric ascent data analysis. Click on that, it'll take you to an assignment that looks like this. I have lots of detailed instructions, but basically you're gonna be pulling up a video that looks like that. I have the, um, 
link to it right here. It's not a very exciting video. It's mostly just footage of him literally sitting in the capsule, staring at the door, staring outside. They cut back and forth between a couple different things. But what's important is the data you see on the screen. So they're gonna show you, um, it starts at about, uh, as you can see here, about 10,900 meters in height. So you're gonna keep an eye on the altitude right there in meters. And at certain altitude points, which I have in my Google Sheet, you're going to then pause it and note down the outside temperature in degrees Celsius. So don't, you can ignore Fahrenheit, we're just gonna use Celsius, degrees C, and the outside air pressure, 4.02 PSI at that point, right? So where the red boxes are, those are the things you need to pay attention to, right? You can look at the other data too, it's kind of cool, but those are the three things that I want your eyes on. You're gonna be opening up a Google Sheet that looks like this. This has all the instructions and the steps you should follow. It's exactly the same as the steps that are in the assignment on Canvas. But more importantly, here is the data table you're gonna be filling in. You can see that I have the first two filled in for you. So you can just fast forward the video to these altitudes, right? Uh, jump to 13,000, 15,000, 17,000, and so on. You're not gonna be able to get that exact altitude because altitude jumps periodically. So just get as close as you can. Pause the video, note down the outside temperature, and note down the outside air pressure. Note the temperature is negative, so make sure you're putting a little negative minus sign or a dash. Don't enter anything except numbers here. So you don't need to enter units, you don't need to have spaces, because we're gonna graph this data. The instructions for graphing it are all listed here. I also made a demonstration video, which is on the assignment. I strongly encourage you to check that out. It's about five minutes long. You can access it right here. Uh, I go into each step and how to do it on Google Sheets, how to graph it. If you're doing things right, you'll end up with a graph that looks like this. And you can then use that graph. You're, you're gonna be submitting that as part of this assignment uh, as a URL. Again, I, I talk about how to do that. But then you can use that graph to complete this assignment, which is a little reflection quiz, where you're then gonna answer questions on that graph. Couple multiple choice, couple free response questions. So um, I'll give us the remainder of class to work on this, pretty much. I'll be here listening if you have questions, or if you're not sure what to do. Um, please, like the graph doesn't look right, or if something's not working, let me know. I can have you share my screen with me. I can walk you through stuff. Um, so I'm here to help, but otherwise we'll time for 25 minutes to work on this and ideally, hopefully most of you can get the graph done and get the quiz done. Um, any questions right now? Okay, and again, I want to emphasize it's okay to fast forward through the video. You don't have to sit there and watch it slowly rise up to the next elevation. I would, I would just kind of click to jump periodically. So 25 minutes, go for it. Let me know if you need help. I feel like it was weird that the temperature started going back up. Yeah, right? It's, I mean, it's still below freezing, right? So it's still cold, but it's warming up. Um, very good, right? That's kind of weird because our understanding is that the atmosphere gets thinner, right? You're also um, further away from the surface of the Earth. so. Anyway, there's some interesting stuff going on there, and that's what we're going to start exploring a little bit, because yes, he definitely sort of like, this is one of these moments where you can see he passed a border between what we call layers of the atmosphere. And this is something you're going to be reading about tonight, and we're going to continue to explore tomorrow. And it's an important concept for understanding Earth's atmosphere, weather, climate, all that stuff that's, that's relevant to everything we're going to explore in this unit. Um, anything else anyone wanted to share about the graph? Not surprising, what happened to temperature, or uh, to pressure, what happened to air pressure? And Camille, you brought it up earlier that you thought it, you had like a resource about a, like as things got higher up, they expand, right? Like the, um, a marshmallow would expand or a balloon expands, and that's why, because there's less air pressure. And we're gonna learn about gas laws and exactly what we mean by air pressure and what causes that. Um, but it's the same reason why when you're in an airplane, you feel your ears pop, right? Because I know it's weird to think, but you have air pockets in your skull, especially behind your ear, and those will expand when you're higher up. And so that's why when you're inside an airplane, even though an airplane is supposed to be encapsulated, uh, you get that kind of like your, your ears pop a little bit because air is trying to escape from behind your eardrums. Anyway, all relevant stuff that we'll touch on. Um, so homework is to make sure that you have submitted your Google Sheet on the assignment, shared it, make sure it is shared so that I can view it. I'm gonna email you if I can. Finish the reflection quiz based on your graph. And then usual deal, we're gonna start reading chapter, 
like, sorry, I teach so many different classes now, I don't even remember what chapter number we're, we're in. We're in Hewitt chapter 26. So you're gonna start reading Hewitt chapter 26, point one and point two, but don't read all of 26.2. 26.2 has this like part B to it that's all about um, the greenhouse effect, which we're gonna to get to, but I wanna hold off on that for now. So you can stop on page 761. Uh, read about the ionosphere, but then stop where it says um, 26B. Usual deal, submit a photo of one page of your notes and complete a reading reflection. You have up to 10 attempts on the reading reflection. Any questions on the homework? All right, kiddos, that is it for me. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank, Thank you. you.